or Philip? The spirit of Philip. Philip is one of the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the emphasis is the foundation of how Philip became one of the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our text is taken from John chapter 1, verse 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. This word or verse is loaded of so many things. Praise the Lord. And we know what the Bible tells us. Let me go backward a bit for better understanding and read Romans chapter 8. I want to read the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse uh, 28, I think. Yes. Let me read from verse, uh, verse 27. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intersection for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That word is loaded. According, those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, whom God foreknew, that is, any call is based on foreknowledge. God does not call whom he has not foreknew. That is, in the world before, maybe before the person was even born, if the God is the creator of everyone, then if he's going to call somebody, he knew why he's calling the person. He has created the person for that call. He said, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he... That, I mean, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. But starting moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. You see, call again. It goes beyond the time of call. It's everything about anybody that God wants to use is predetermined. Before the person will even come to that, he said, moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called, and whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Now, when you look at that verse, John chapter 1, verse 43, it said, The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found. Why is it at that very precise moment that Jesus found Philip? Why was Philip where Jesus was passing. Why was Jesus passing that road to Galilee and it was at that instant that he found Philip? So you will see the principle of predetermination. God had predestined and because it was made for a purpose, everything was now working together for good. And that is why in life, you need to be praying to be at the right place at the right time doing the right thing at the right time and eh? thinking about the right thing at the right time. Let's imagine that it had been predestined for Philip to be found by Jesus as he was found and eh? Eh, Philip was not there to be found. Let's imagine that it was predetermined by God that Philip will function in the ministry of Jesus Christ and Philip asked to go and eh? have a wife or a friend that does not, that is planted by the devil to make sure that that destiny of God concerning the life of Philip does not come to pass. So we need to be understanding everything about our life as predetermined by God. And that was what happened here. He said, if found Philip, may God find you in Jesus' name. I don't know, maybe you are getting what I'm saying. He must find you where he wants you found. 
Joseph was a personality that was destined to be in prison. Destined to be in Egypt. For 400 years, it has, been, it has been predestined that the person that we actualize they are being in that place eh, must be in that place before they come. That is what we mean by the spirit of Philip. The spirit of Philip. Philip is from Bethsaida of Galilee, the city of Andrew and Peter, according to John chapter 1, verse 44. He said, and along with Andrew and other townsmen, he had joined into Bethany to hear the teachings of John the Baptist. Remember, in the Old Testament, John the Baptist was a forerunner, a messenger sent ahead of time. He was sent ahead of time. Praise the Lord. And when he was doing his own, everybody never knew that he was a messenger as a forerunner to the real, real personality that is coming. They came to come and receive the preachings and the teachings of John the Baptist and there he received the first call from Christ. Philip was one of the first disciples to follow Jesus Christ. Like Andrew, Philip immediately won a fresh followers, Nathaniel for Jesus. But the Bible says something about Philip that is not found said about the other disciples and that is Jesus went forth into Galilee and he found Philip. That is what John chapter 1, verse 43. Look at what verse 43 now said. Now, let me read from verse 40. He said, The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and he said to him, Follow me. May you receive your own call in Jesus' name. Even though Philip was sought out by the Lord, Philip was just an ordinary man. I want to say something. Every personality that God has called, there was nobody. Praise the Lord. Anyone you see that God has called, they were nobody. And that is why when you see people that God called as nobody, becoming somebody, and they are arrogating to themselves, you begin to wonder, who are they? If not God that has called them, the spirit of Philip is seen in that John chapter 2, verse 44 to verse 46. Look at what it says. John chapter 2. No, it shouldn't be 20, uh, 44 to 46. Now, where we want to get to there is that the spirit in Philip was that as he was found by the Lord, he did not stop by what he has. He went to go and tell his order. It's not John chapter 2. It's John chapter 1. And I want us to look at it. John chapter 1 from verse 44 to verse 46. Don't forget that verse 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Let's jump to verse 44. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Peter, Philip now found, just like he was found. What did Philip did? Philip himself now found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophet rose, Jesus of Nazareth, the sons of God. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Now, what is the spirit that is in this man called Philip? Jesus found him. Praise the Lord. And because Jesus found him, evaluate. He saw the finding of Jesus Christ as an opportunity that must not be wasted. And what did he do? He too took steps to go and find somebody. And the Bible says, just like Jesus finds Philip, Philip too now found Nathaniel. The Bible says, a tree will give back to its own kind. 
That is the spirit we are talking about. Philip does not take for light and for granted the privileged grace God granted him to be found. There was something in Philip that Jesus saw, which was a trait that Philip had, had that Jesus went to get him for. God does not call anybody without a purpose. The Bible says something. It said, the gift of a man. He do what? I'm asking you. He makes a way. There are certain character and attitude and talent that are imbibing you that you may not even know. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was praying for somebody yesterday. The lady is 50 years old and she has never given birth. And while we were praying, she was crying. And while we were praying, God said, she will be pregnant. I went, Why did God say that? I said, look at this lady. She, she has not given birth. I could see the zeal in her handling children. There is no children that come in contact with her that does not see her and they will be desiring her. I wish my mother is this person. Praise the Lord. That is a trait of motherhood. A godly mother in this, in this lady. So I was presenting to God. I said, ah, the Bible said the gift of a man make a way. Are you not the one that created this person? Look at how, how accommodating, how gifted, how, how motherly she is. In other children that are not his. Why don't you give her the privilege, praise the Lord, to be the mother of her own children? And God told me, am I not the one that gives the gift of mothering to her? She will be her own children. Hello, somebody. Your gift will make a way for you in Jesus' name. So what did Jesus find in, in Philip? The gift. That if this one is brought into the vineyard, the gift will add value to his ministry. Jesus does not find Philip because Philip is tall. Philip is... Uh, no. He saw with, he, Jesus was seen Philip with a spiritual high. The talent that I inherit in Philip. It was the trade that Philip had that Jesus went to get. When Philip heeded the call to follow Jesus, he went and told Nathaniel about Jesus. Philip's reaction was, I will follow you, but I am going to bring someone with you in. That is the trace in him. The Bible said Philip was found by Jesus. And the next, eh, that chapter have not closed. Philip too went and found his friend. And that is the realities of the spirit we are talking about. As soon as he has learned to know Jesus as his master, Philip was eager to communicate his discovery to another. Don't forget where we read in that Roman chapter 28 to 30. Every believers have been predestinated. Hello? 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 I remember when we were in Paco Church. I came to this church and I met Titi here as a choir. Abi? Abi? I met Titi in this church in choir. I met Sade in this church in choir. I met uh, Benson in this church as a choir. I met uh, Oluchi. Oluchi, Sister Oluchi in this church as a choir. I met uh, this boy, this uh, boy that beat the drum there. Eh? Joe, praise the Lord. You remember Joe then? Very hefty man. If we handle the drum like this, uh, you, you'll be forced to dance. He was gifted as a choir. This Calabar boy that said, oh, 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 what's his name? You don't remember. Eh? Eh, no. Eh, no. If you are dancing here and they say, oh, oh, I don't even know how they sing that song. Everybody will start dancing. Praise the Lord. We were in Paco Church. When you see all of them together, praise the Lord, you won't want to leave the church. Am I talking to somebody? Eh? You know, there are so many things when they, we are in church service and I will see our choir when they are singing. I will just be looking at them like this. Entity, that is not the spirit there. Abi, you see joy in anything everybody is doing. You won't tell somebody to shout on microphone. They are happy doing it. 
It was Paco Church. You see the joy in them for whatever they were doing. Eh? As bad as Benson is. What can Benson not touch? He can play drum. He can do piano. He can do, he can blow trumpet. He can, he's multi-talented. And he's a choir leader. Benson. Eh? He can play guitar. Praise the Lord. Now, who found all of them and brought them together? Hello? Hello? Praise the Lord. Now, let's now imagine they were found by Jesus and they were brought. And they were nobody. They are doing nothing. That's what we mean by the Spirit. There's a reason why God brought you to this church. And you are going to stand before God. It's either you are building the church or you are destroying the church. You are not brought here to criticize. There are many errors in the choir then, Abi. But when the choir gather for ministration, you don't remember their Abi? You, you, ordinary offering. You remember them when we want to drop offering. Because the church was so small, we would drop our offering. You will dance down, dance down, dance down. All the chair there is the branch, benches. So you will now come out of the church, Abi. You will dance out. You will dance, 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 dance. Offering, we may be singing. 30 minutes, we are still on offering. There is this spirit in them that we gather together. There is joy. Hello? Why? Certain people were found and they gather and we become one family. May God make you the one that will bring somebody to join the family of Christ in Jesus' name. That's what we mean by the spirit. The spirit that understood why you are here. Not the spirit that wants to criticize. Not the spirit that wants to condemn. The spirit that is looking for, let me see how I can put in my own input in where I find myself. The spirit that wants to make a replica. Somebody that does not forget how he comes here and he now said, now that I've come here, let my impact be made known in this place. Not somebody that wants to destroy. Philip was found. And the next thing, Philip went to go and find somebody. That is what the Bible tells us. There are many people we find that the Bible did not tell us. That is the evangelizing spirit we are talking about. In this new year, in the next couple of one and a half weeks, fourth month we go, how many souls have you brought to this church. Hello? 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 Somebody found you. Somebody invited you to the church. There is nobody here that you will not say somebody directed you here. Maybe you have challenges. Maybe you have problem. And you said, ah, go to Light Chapel. Somebody, you had some Light Chapel somewhere. And you came here, your life was not the same. And you decided to stay. And since you stayed here, no doubt, God must have been real in your life. The question is, since you came in, praise the Lord, how many people have you brought? How many people have you told, just like your heart, that go to Light Chapel? Praise the Lord. Maybe somebody invited you. And what's her name? Sister... Abi, uh -huh. and I know how many people you have invited to the church. Praise the Lord. It will be a multiplier effect. That's the spirit we are talking about. But many of us, when we come to the church, instead of taking, making sure that just as I was brought in, I want to bring people in, we will now go out to be destroying the church. We will now be using our mouth to negate the weaknesses of the church. Many of us, instead of building where we have been built, where we have been blessed, we use our mouth to destroy the church a lot. We never heard that Philip was derogating Jesus Christ. All he knows is that, eh, I have found the man they said you that Moses told us, come and see. Philip was eager to go and get someone. 
There is nobody that is in this auditorium that you will tell me that since you joined this church, God has not made himself real in your life. How many people have you brought to Christ? That's the message here. Philip was eager to go out and get someone. Philip did for Nathaniel what Jesus did for him. And we need to do for others what Jesus has done for us. That is what we mean by Christianity. The spirit of Philip, that as you are brought in, you want to go out and bring somebody else. Jesus has called each one of us personally. That's what Luke chapter 19, verse 9 to 10. We were all called personally. Please give us that Luke chapter 19 from verse 9 to 10. And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation has come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at it. This person wanted to see Jesus. He was so short. He climbed the tree. And while he was blubbering, you know, praise the Lord. Eh? Look at it. Let me satisfy the curiosity of my eyes. That was what happened to this man. But while he was there, Jesus was just going. And when he got to the direct place we had in that look up, he said, come down. Today, salvation. May you be at the right place in Jesus' name. Hello, am I talking to somebody? There are so many people out there that they are not at the right place. And God wants you that was already in the right place to go and invite them to the right place. There are so many people that are in challenges, problems, and they needed somebody that will direct them to the right place. God wants you to go. But we are, we should be using the experience we have to bring people to the right place. We are using our mouth to derogate the church. The Lord will forgive some of us in Jesus' name. I've shared it here many, many times. I was a year the woman wanted to do something and they were gathering. And the wife of a friend came to see us. And uh, when they were nursing, this is how much we are going to. And one of our leaders, eh, one of our church members, sat beside the woman. Somebody you have never seen for the, for, in your life. And I said, don't mind them. Eh? Whatever you can, just put there, put there. Praise the Lord. Eh? Eh? That's the spirit that is in many of us. We always derogate. We are not lifting people out. We have to lift people up. We did not find Jesus for Jesus find us. It's Jesus that found us. And if you appreciate Jesus that found you, then let us allow the spirit of feeling to invade our lives so as to use us to reach others. You are going to become so selfish when you don't use, allow Jesus Christ to use you as an instrument to reach others. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are talking about evangelism. I want to say something to you. Some of you have been coming to compassion service. We don't use any flyer. Because that was the instruction God told us. No flyers. He said, you just do your work, I will advertise it. He said, the people I brought will be the one to. And you will notice there is no flyer. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, there is no day we have compassion that we don't have. If you have been coming, you won't have first comers. Because somebody came, somebody was advised to come. They came, God answered their prayer, and they will now go and tell others. That is what we are talking about, evangelism. Be the instrument by which God will use to reach out to people out there. There are people that are not in the right place that God wants them to be so that they can touch their life. And God is wanted to use you and me that are in the right place to tell those that does not have the right inspiration to find themselves in the right place. Nathaniel wouldn't have been a disciple of Jesus Christ if Philip does not go and tell him, come and see. That's the spirit of evangelism we are talking about. For some of us, despite the fact that God has been faithful in our life, we have never used the experiences we have 
to reach out to others. Number two, Philip had the desire to know God. In John chapter 6, look at what he says in verse 3 to verse 7. John chapter 6. He said, and Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, may God single you out in Jesus' name. Jesus said unto Philip, we are, when shall we buy bread that this may eat? Look at verse 6. And this is said to prove him. You could see that for every privilege God has given to Philip, there is a purpose. Why didn't Jesus Christ go and call Peter? Why didn't Jesus Christ go and call John? Why didn't Jesus Christ go and call him Matthew? He went to go and call Philip because Jesus Christ knows that the grace is in him already. He said to prove him, that is to prove what is in him, what is deposited in him, he, to prove him. That is why God has given that opportunity. That is why the favor came than others. That is why God did not go and call others. He called Philip because he knew the grace is already in Philip and he has Philip. He said God to prove him. For Jesus knew what he would do. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm reading John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 3 to 7. And Jesus went up on a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover feast of the field was there and Jesus lifted up his head and seen a great multitude coming towards him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may he? What this? But this is said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread. That, eh? If a 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have in him. Then one of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the plate, so the men sat down in a number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given time, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather out of the fragment that remain, so that nothing are Lost. Jesus wanted to see what Philip's reaction would be to the need of hungry people. The other disciple told Jesus to send the people away. When you study the translations of that, let's see that in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew versions of that encounter. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 13 to verse uh, 15. Matthew chapter 14, 13 to verse 15. When Jesus had it, he deserted, departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes had it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, a disciple came to Jesus, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hours is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up five, twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men. That is, excluding women and children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, when you match that translation, I mean, uh, explanation of Matthew 
Matthew was writing to the Jews. Praise the Lord. John was writing to the whole world, to the Gentile, that Jesus is actually the Son of God. So the mind each writer has is different. When you match that explanation together, you understand. Then, yeah, the disciples said, Jesus Christ, send them away. Praise the Lord. But thank God that when other disciples were saying, send them away, Philip said, eh, even so much bread cannot feed them. The Lord will find you in Jesus' name. Okay, God will find me in Jesus' name. Jesus was trying to see if Philip will respond to the miracle and be available for miracle. But Philip was one that had a desire to know God in a greater way. May the hunger to know God be in you and me in Jesus' name. There is the dynamic manifestation of the sovereignties of God has always come to manifestations in any lives that hunger for God. Can I repeat it or you understand? Everything is possible to whom? Who do what? Who believe? Anybody that does not believe, nothing is possible. So the dynamic manifestation of the awesomeness of God is easily seen in the life of people that make it available and do that hunger for it. You want to sow something for the church? Some people say, I don't, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. And what happened? They won't have. And you have some people, when the church is in need, that is when they tie. Let me sacrifice for God to use that. You see, let me say something to you. Go and study your Bible very well. Everything in the kingdom of God is principles. Christianity is about dying to live. You know the meaning of dying? You let go. You deny yourself. If you don't enjoy denying yourself for God, you can't live in abundance with God. Abundance of God cannot come to somebody that is reasoning. You don't bring common sense to the things of God. If God always bless people that is ready to obey first, damn the consequences. That is what faith is all about. And that is one of the things that may, God, many of us that have not allowed many of us to experience God. We reason. We will be managing. Many people are struggling because the little they have, they have never, they have never learned how to deny themselves. Hey, before I do this, before I do that, hey, this one is coming. The, the Bible says, then eh, just be eh, obey force. Look at the widow that eh, that man of God went to go and meet. He said, first of all, go and prepare for me and my. Ben, praise the Lord. The little they had that they want to eat and die. And the man of God said, first of all, prepare for me. And then what is left, you can come and eat. Praise the Lord. Let me come and tell you to give me your salary. To meet my needs. Praise the Lord. I know how say, which kind of stupid pastor are you, sir? Eh? Eh? Let me tell you the salary you are going to collect by by praise the Lord by the end <laughs> praise the Lord Sache, I tell you that the spirit of God is telling me that when you collect this salary come and give it to me uh -huh, uh -huh. praise the Lord <laughs> praise the Lord eh? you see him laughing because he has already budgeted on it praise the Lord he cannot do it why? human flesh will not but everything about God is first of all dying to yourself the Bible says, as many as are being led by the Spirit of God. That's what Romans chapter 12 is saying. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to make your body a living sacrifice. That word is heavy. Living sacrifice. That is, when you are sacrificially, you know, when you kill an animal for a sacrifice, that animal is dead. It doesn't feel what you are doing. But a living sacrifice, you are not dead. You are feeling the impact. But many of us, what we give to God does not cost us anything. We reason and reason. It doesn't cost us anything. We complain. And Jesus Christ said, do not worry about tomorrow. Hello? Hello? He said, tomorrow we take care of his head. Today is what matters. The Lord will help our faith in Jesus' name. 
Hello? Hello? Am I talking to somebody? Philip was a person that lived by faith. He knows whom that Lord. May God make you a vessel of honor to God in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has compassion for others. We saw that spirit in him again in John chapter 12 from verse 20. John chapter 12 from verse 20 to verse 22. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Praise the Lord. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Look at it. They came to him. What did Philip did? Philip came and told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, he knew that by the time those people go, Jesus will be on time. He didn't do it on his own. He gathered people together. Praise the Lord. He has compassion. He didn't say we are the... You know, there are some people that fend people away from people that can help them. Praise the Lord. He had compassion. There is a spirit of Philip that seems to have compassion and care for people that he would go beyond the normal. This led him to introduce the people of grace to Christ. The grace that came to Jerusalem to worship at the feast of Passover was attracted to Philip Greek's name as a means to getting audience with Philip, I mean with Jesus. And in humility, he first told his townsmen, Andrew, who had been in the first to come to Jesus, then both together told Jesus. Philip was must have been a person that others found readily approachable. Some of us, we are not approachable at all. We are not approachable at all. Praise the Lord. Do you get the message? I'm asking you. Do you get the message? The spirit of feeling. Can we allow the spirit of feeling to touch also that we can reach out to the people that are not in our realm, that we can go to the undesirables, can we be determined enough to have a constant mindset of always bringing somebody to Christ? And if you are a member of the church without this spirit, you are not yet part of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Neither are you part of those that call themselves the son or children of God. Let the spirit that is in Philip building you this night. Go home with this. God find you. You are predestined. It's not by accident that you are in this church. It's not by accident. You are predestined by God to be a member of Jesus' life ministry. And since the time you came here, how many people have you shown the light to? How many people have you ministered to? How many people have you invited well, what are the things you are saying about the church? Outside the church, are your neighbors and everybody that around your neighborhood, are they proud to hear the testimony and seeing the realities of the members of the church in you? Praise the Lord. The Lord will speak to you and me in Jesus' name. We are in our evangelism month. And I'm asking you, how many people have been invited to Christ? How many people have been invited to church? How many people have been invited to Sunday service, Bible study, revival hour on Friday, compassion service? There are so many. Night vigil will soon come. How many people have you invited? Come and have a night vigil with God in my church. Let's pray together. When you are not even coming, can you invite somebody? Praise the Lord. What are we talking about? God find you. You two go and find others. Tell your neighbor, find your, somebody near you. Find others. Hello? Hello? You are not talking. Find others. There are so many people like your hitch mate. Find them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't go and find gossipers like you. Find people that will add value to the church. The Lord will speak to you and me in Jesus' name. There is none of us that is here that somebody did not find us and brought us here. If human beings did not bring you here like myself, Jesus brought me. And I'm praying for Jesus to bring others. 
if you are a tree that is appreciating what God has done in your life, reach out to bring others into the house of God. Don't bother about how they will have an encounter with God. It is you that is inviting them that we just go and tell God, to God that the coming of these people to this place will never be the same. But first of all, find others. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Any questions?